This is Bo Bailey from Calvary Bible Church in Gregg. You're listening to Pastor Jim Jenkins on Heaven Bound. I see a sea. Good morning again, friends, and welcome one more time to Heaven Bound. Once again, on behalf of the good folks here at Calvary Bible Church, I am Doug Benedict, and Pastor Jim Jenkins will be joining us just a little bit later on. But before he comes, I'd like to give you a little history about the church, especially if this is your first time joining us. If you've listened to us in the past, you pretty much know the same routine, but If this is your first time, we are so excited that you've tuned in. And we do hope you get a blessing out of the good Southern gospel music, as well as the great preaching by Pastor Jim Jenkins. Calvary Bible Church is a small congregation located in the town of Gregg, New York. We are located in Lewis County, and we have been here for 36 years, going on 37 with the exact same pastor the entire time. Not Many churches can say that, and we do love to brag that we have had the same pastor for that long, and we have not strayed from the good preaching and standing firm on the King James Bible. We have the motto, only a stranger once. So if you would like to come and you want to be part of a good family, a good group that believes the Bible cover to cover, then why don't you come join us today? Our times today with being the first Sunday of the month. We'll begin at 9 o'clock this morning with our fellowship breakfast. Then at 9.30 we will have Sunday school. At 10.30 we will have our morning service. Then we'll break for lunch at noon. And about 1 o'clock we'll resume this afternoon for our afternoon service. And then come on back Wednesday night for our midweek prayer and Bible study. All those times do have a nursery provided for you, and we hope you come to all of them. Sunday school, we break up into some smaller groups, and we can dig in deep into a couple topics or ask questions. If there's something that you're not sure of, come and ask that question, and we'll have that answered for you. And then morning service is a little bit more traditional, and breakfast and lunch, everything is provided for you. So don't bring anything. Just come bring your appetite, and spend some time talking with us. Now this afternoon will be a quick service where we usually observe the Lord's table on the first Sunday of the month. Now, you could put in the GPS 6869 Sweeney Road, Gregg, New York, or follow these super easy directions. If you're coming out of Boonville or Utica, head north on Route 12. If you're coming out of Watertown or Lovell, head south on Route 12. And if you're coming out of Romer West Leiden, head north on 26, keep straight on 12D, make a right-hand turn onto 12 and head north, then make a right-hand turn onto Burdick's Crossing Road. Burdick's Crossing Road will take you all the way to the end. Turn left onto Gregg Road. First right-hand turn is going to be Sweeney Road, and we are up there about 200 yards on the right-hand side. And all else fails, we do stream all of our services live at cbclewiscounty.com. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 16. And preacher's going to talk about some myths that people have. One of them, they like to tie into the birth of Jesus. And they try to say it didn't happen. Jesus was not a real man, and Jesus was not the Son of God. Now, this is not true. So pay attention as Pastor ties this into this Christmas season that's coming up and see if it touches you, and see if something you're missing out of that. So again, 1 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 16. And as you're turning, let's listen to Gold City as they sing A Strong Hand. You may have wondered how I made it through How I've kept my head up is a mystery But I've got a presence 
that moves me along. A strong hand's been guiding me all the way home. I felt a strong hand holding to mine. He's Shadows of darkness, he's led me on. A strong hand's been guiding me all the way home. I've walked through the fire and I've moved through the flood. I've suffered through bad times, and I've tasted the good. But in gladness or in sorrow, I've never been alone. For a strong hand's been guiding. That was Gold City. A strong hand's been guiding me all the way home. I, as you know, if you've ever listened to this program before, you know that I like Gold City. And uh, that that's a, a good one. A strong hand's been guiding me. In, in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, we do read this. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. The Bible tells us in... Matthew, names will be Emmanuel, which is by interpretation, God with us, God with us. I know there are a lot of skeptics. I, I realize that, and maybe you're listening today, and you're one of them. I'm not sure why you'd be listening, but I'm glad that you are. A lot of skeptics about the Bible, a lot of, well, I don't know how that can be true. I don't know how this can be true. I want to remind you that with God, nothing is impossible. All things are possible with God. And so we read this particular passage in Timothy. Paul writing said, God was manifest in the flesh. 
that God showed up. God came down here. God with us. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, without him was, and without him was not anything made that was made. He was the light of the world, and the light shineth in darkness, the darkness comprehended it not. In verse 14, it says this, and now let me, I just forgot how it goes, and the Word was made flesh. Now we know from verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Despite what some of our false groups say, that it's a, the Word was a God, He was not a God, He was the God. The Word was with God, and the Word was God, not a God, but was God. And it says then in verse 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So since we know from verse 1 that the Word was God, that we read in verse 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. And so God was manifest in the flesh. He came down here, and He lived among us. I, I know that there are a lot of Greek myths, and, and that's what they are, myths, but and stories about the Greek gods visiting us. And I've read things that people said about, well, Jesus was, the story of Jesus is just to take off on another religion. No, my dear friend, other religions are a take off on Christ. God was manifest in the flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. God manifest in the flesh. Now, when you saw Jesus, when people observed him, you say, well, and people will immediately ask, well, was Jesus real? Of course he was real. Not only is there biblical evidence to that, but there's also secular evidence of people who had nothing to do with the Bible, who gave testimony to the fact that there was a man named Jesus who lived and walked here on the earth. Josephus tells us a little bit about him. But God was manifest in the flesh. And of course, the question is, why would God come down here among us? Why would God come? John 3.16, which just about everybody knows, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why would God give us his son? Now, we're, you know, celebrating the advent, the first coming of Christ. Why would God send his son down here? Why would God do that? Now, if we took a survey of 10 people and said, what is Christmas about? We would probably get, and I'm just guessing this, so I'll just say probably, and, but we'd probably get three people who might know. Other, most people have, particularly the younger crowd, really have no idea what Christmas is about. I have watching Fox, and you know, they know uh, what is Christmas about? Uh, the birth of Santa Claus. I mean, that's what somebody honestly said, and they said it with a straight face. I, I don't doubt that they honestly believe that, the birth of Santa Claus or uh, some other just really foolishness. And we celebrate on December the 25th. I read an article almost mm, a week or so ago that reports to show that Christ was born on December 25th. I personally believe that Jesus was born on or about December the 25th. I believe that he was, and I believe that there's biblical evidence to show that. And one Sunday this month, I'm going to um, try and bring that out. But, but God was manifest in the flesh. Why did God, why did God send his son? Why did God send his son here? Now, he is the son. He is the son of God. And God was manifest. Now, if I say, okay, you say, well, what does that mean? He's God's son. Well, if you have a son, if you have a son, you are evidently his father, and, or if you're listening, his mom, but, but God was Jesus' father. Now, let me say quickly that the son of God has always existed. Now, I cannot explain the Trinity I believe the Trinity. I believe that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I believe that. I have absolutely no doubt about that. The Bible teaches that. 
Again, there are false groups, false cults out there and say, no, the Trinity is not real. But, you know, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Paul repeats that same formula in the book of Corinthians. God sent his son, his son. This is my beloved son, hear ye him. God sent his son. So if he is the son of God, then he must have the attributes of God. Therefore, Jesus must be God. The Jews one time were going to stone Jesus. And Jesus said to them, for what good work do you stone me? And they said, for a good work we stone thee not. But, because, but for blasphemy, and thou being a man, makest thyself God. Friend, I want you to know that, make no mistake about it, Jesus claimed to be God. Again, there are false groups that say, well, he never claimed to be God. Oh, he most certainly did. And the Jews, the religious people, understood him to be claiming that. Now, you can fight against that. You can say, well, I don't believe that. But that doesn't change the fact that they understood him to claim to be God. Now, why did Jesus, why was Jesus, the Son of God, manifest in the flesh? Why did he come down here? Well, again, we go back to that John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, I can't tell you the verse right away, but Jesus said this, no greater love hath any man this than a man laid down his life for his friends. We were never the friends, the Bible says in Romans chapter five, but God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, we weren't really friends of God, we were sinners. For God so loved the world. My dear listener today, can you grasp that? that God loved this world so much. Why would God love this world? Why would God love me? Why would God love you? Why would God love anybody so much? Now listen to that verse again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God gave his son to die on the cross, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Why did God send his son? Is because he loved mankind so much. People have said, why did God love men so much? Why did God love mankind so much? Way back in the Garden of Eden when he created man and put him in that garden, took care of it, then the day that Adam ate of it, he died. God killed an innocent animal, provided a, a, a substitution for their sin, a blood offering for their sin. Why would God love men that much? You think about that. You try and grasp that little truth for a little while. Why would God love men so much that he gave his only son to die for them on the cross? Now, all things were made by him, and without him was anything made that was made. He is not only the creator, but he is the sustainer, that all things are kept by the word of his power. God not only created the world, but he keeps the world. He keeps the world from falling apart. He keeps atoms from flying off in every direction. He is not only the creator of life, but he is the sustainer of life. Everything that there is, without him, was not anything made that was made. The sun, the moon, oh, and he made the stars also. All the trees, every rock, every river, every drop of water, every animal, every insect, every fish, God made them all. Now, God loved man so much. This creator of all that there is, loved men so much that he was willing to give the most precious thing he had, his son. And my friend, that's what grace is all about. 
if you've listened to the program before, you may have remembered me saying this. If somebody comes to your house, breaks into your house, and kills members of your family and robs your house, and you come home and find people in your house dead, and you know immediately who did it. Now, there are three things that could happen. One is this. You could get a gun and shoot them. That would be vengeance. And the Bible says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. That is vengeance. You can go and shoot them, kill them. I'll, I'll get even with you if it's the last thing I do. And, or secondly, you call the police. I know who did this. Police arrest them. They're put in jail. I give them the death penalty. Oh, you for the death penalty? Well, that's what God says. In Genesis 9, 6, they get the death penalty, and they are put to death for murder. That is justice. That is justice. So, number one is vengeance. Number two is justice. Or third, you say, I know who did that. I know who did that. Broke into my house, killed my family. What a horrible thing that was to do. But I'm going to go find those people, and I'm going to bring them to live with me, and I'm going to take care of them for the rest of their lives. My friend, that is what grace is. God, Jesus gave the parable of the vineyard, and uh, at, at the time of the harvest, he sent somebody over to get what was his, and the Bible says they despitefully used him and drove him off, and uh, they sent some others, and they killed another person, and they shamefully used others. Lastly, he said, I'll send my son. They will honor him. And when they saw the son coming, they said, this is the heir. Let us kill him, and the vineyard will be ours. Now, you can imagine what happened on that. And when the master found out, he came and took care of those guys. But God, God sent his son to die for us so that we might have everlasting life, despite the fact that we were sinners, that we had despitefully used him, that we had, we, we, I say we, I'm talking about me, I'm talking about you. We were the ones that nailed Jesus to that cross. We were the ones that caused him to be crucified. Remember that old song? It's kind of an old song now. It says, I was guilty with nothing to say, and they were coming to take me away. When a voice from heaven was heard that said, let him go, take me instead. I should have been crucified. I should have suffered and died. I should have hung on the, on the cross in disgrace. But Jesus, God's son, took my place. Charles Weigel wrote that song, No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. Charles Weigel said in his testimony, and he kind of dresses it up and elaborates on it, and he, he said he was a, a, a bad little boy, bad little boy, and, and took him before the judge, and the judge's son said, I'll take his place. You see, friend, that's what Jesus did for you and I. He took our place. Why was God manifest there at, at Bethlehem 2,000 years ago? Why was God manifest in the flesh? Why did God, as Paul writes in the book of Philippians, by, he says this, that he took upon himself the form of a servant, was fashioned uh, after mankind in the flesh that he came down here and he partook of, of our lifestyle. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He was tired. He did all that for one reason, to redeem you and I. I told this story last Sunday when I was, my writing is not very, it's pitiful. And I had to, I, I was in second grade math class, Mrs. Kunkel and she said my math was too sloppy to do it over, and I did it over. She said, do it again. I did it again. I did it a fourth time, and I thought, boy, that looks really good. So I decided I was going to scribble the other ones all out. Well, unfortunately, I scribbled out one of the good ones, the good one. And all I had left to show was one that was really pitiful. She made me go get my brother out of kindergarten and he had to take the paper home and my mother had to see it she had to sign it and send it back and it's basically this is what your kid did all day in school I was guilty 
I knew judgment was waiting. I took my time getting home that day. And that's what's true about mankind. Judgment is waiting for us. We have messed up. We have totally fumbled the ball, dropped the ball, missed the basket, shot the puck into the stands. Friends, we have totally, the Bible says, sinned. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we have no hope. We have no hope except God. He is our hope. He is our way. Jesus said, I am the truth and the way and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus was manifest. God was manifest in the flesh. Why? To bear our sins, to take our punishment, to suffer our hell so that you and I would not have to go there. When we stop and try to grasp that, when we stop and try to think about that, why God would do that, it begins to, uh, what was the word I'm looking for? It staggers the imagination. It boggles the mind about why God would do that for me. But he didn't do it just for me. He did it for you, friend. Jesus died for you on that old rugged cross. Now, you can accept that gift or you can reject it. You can tell God, God, I accept the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. I understand fully that I'm a sinner and I understand fully that Jesus died on that cross and came and bore my sin so that I would not have to suffer the punishment. And by faith, I trust Jesus as my savior. Lord, I receive you now. Come into my heart and save me. Now, you can do that. You can receive God's gift. Or you can reject the gift of God. You can tell God, God, I don't want that. God, I don't need that. My friend, I cannot tell you how many people that I, I have come across in my 40-some years of being a preacher who simply said, I don't want what God did for me. I don't want to be saved. I don't want to go to heaven. I don't want to spend eternity living. I don't want to live forever and ever and ever. Where the Bible says in Psalm, I believe it's Psalm 1611, at thy right hand are pleasures for, in thy presence is fullness of joy. We may experience joy here, but in friend, there's going to be fullness of joy. I've met people say, I don't want that. I don't want that. You can either accept God's gift. Here it is, Christmas. You can accept the gift of God. Or you can just tell God, God, I don't need what you've got, and I don't want what you've got. But my friend, I'm telling you, eternity is forever. God was manifest in the flesh to take away our sins. Would you trust him today? Would you receive the greatest gift ever offered? Trust Christ today. Invite him into your heart today. Because listen to me. Listen to me. Tomorrow just might be too late. Friend, would you like to accept this free gift by God? Or would you like to treat it like a new pair of socks that you got from a friend? Because if you turn down this free gift of God, the free gift of eternal life in heaven, that's exactly how you're treating God. And you'd be smarter to turn away the socks than you would to, to turn away God. You might say, well, for a Christmas gift, I don't have to give up anything. Well, you don't have to give up anything for eternal life in heaven. If you have any more questions about how you can know for sure that you're going to heaven when you die, or if you have any questions about the whole process, or if you have to give anything up, give us a call today. Our phone number here is 315-348-6271 or send us an email. That email address is cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. Or even better yet, why don't you come join us today? There's an empty place in a pew that can only be filled by you. Thank you again for joining us this half hour. Lord willing, we will catch you again next week on Heaven Bound.